Welcome to Behavioral Health in the New Normal, a podcast developed by Prestige Community Resources, aimed at bringing healing back to our community through knowledge, expert advice, and positive messaging. The show is a joint venture between the Department of Behavioral Health and Prestige Community Resources, funded by SAMHSA in response to the challenges currently impacting our communities. Hosted by Paul Wells Sr., who uses over 30 years of extensive clinical social work experience to conduct insightful interviews with experts and professionals on a wide range of topics that impact the Washington, D.C. community. From behavioral health crisis, to education, to financial hardship, and anything in between. This show will provide information and insights that will surely make a difference in your life. Hello, welcome back. I am your host, Tania McQueen, and this is the Behavioral Health in the New Normal podcast. Today we have a very special guest, Shayla Voss. She is a social media influencer, a YouTuber, and most importantly, a mom. So Shayla, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, So I live in Oxford Hill in the Oxford Hill area. I've lived there all my life, um, mostly. Um, I graduated from Bowie State University, and I have two babies. I have a soon-to-be four-year-old and a soon-to-be two-year-old, son and a daughter. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's me. Okay. So, Shayla, you said you have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, right? Yes. How has that been in the pandemic? How has been being at home with your kids and everything, homeschooling and all of that in the pandemic? Well, not going to lie, it's been rough. It's been an adjustment, I can say. Just trying to adjust to the fact that, you know, our normal schedule was completely thrown off due to the pandemic. Um, I was laid off. So, you know, we were all home all the time. And it was just, I just really had to take the time to like, adjust and get my mind together and set like new goals and new schedules for us so that, you know, the kids can still have some structure in their lives. Um, I'm not going to say that was easy. But You know, it was difficult trying to make sure, you know, I'm still, you know, they're not in school or daycare, so I'm trying to make sure that they're still learning on a daily basis and just doing the whole, like, kind of stay-at-home mom thing, something that I wasn't exactly used to. So it's been a journey. A journey? Yeah. Um, And how are your kids doing? How are they acclimating to just being at home? Well, my youngest, uh, my daughter... She's fine. She wants to be around mommy all the time anyways. <laughs> so, you know, she's fine. She's as long as she's around me, she's good. But my son, on the other hand, he was used to, you know, being in school around all his friends and things like that. And, you know, sometimes he'll he'll say like, mommy, I want to go to school. I want to see my friends. And, you know, I'll be so sad because I, I know that he missed the social setting and being around other kids his age and being able to play and learn new things every day and things like that. So, you know, I kind of have to explain to him in the best way possible you know what's going on you know so that he can understand because he's only three right now and I just have to let him know you know and kind of be honest with him at the same time like you know people are getting sick we have to stay home for a little bit and then you know eventually you'll be able to see your your friends again soon so so how do you feel like um I know a lot of people I talk to a couple of people and they feel like a lot of apprehension when they're getting ready to go out into the community with their kids because sometimes they don't remember to keep their mask on that kind of thing like how is that for you for me my son like it was kind of crazy just like adjusting to wearing a mask and getting them to wear a mask too um my daughter is still kind of too young to wear a mask but i do put one on her you know when we do go out and i try to kind of limit the amount of times i've taken them you know, anywhere as much as possible. You know, I'm fortunate enough to have my mom who's here and um, she's been working from home. So if I need to run to the grocery store or what have you and she's available, you know, she can just keep them for me. But, you know, during those times when I don't have that help and I have to take them out, you know, I just kind of have to let them know, no, baby, you have to keep your mask going and you know, my daughter mostly is the one who pulls hers off the most. (laughs) And she also tries to pull my on. I guess she doesn't like not being able to see my whole face and things like that. So, I mean, it is definitely, it has been a struggle 
um, just trying to get them adjusted because they really don't understand what's going on. And, you know, I try to explain to them the best way I can. But at the same time, they're young. So they just like, I guess I have to do this. But, you know, they're just like, okay, I don't want to put my mask on. And my son will say, I don't want to put it on. Like, I want to take it off. And, you know, so it's just, it's just a process. <laughs> process. And speaking of process, can you take us back to the beginning of the pandemic? What did it look like? How did your family look like? Because you, you mentioned that you were unemployed or you're furloughed, you got furloughed because of the pandemic and all of that stuff. So how did that look? How, how was that transition? Well, that transition for me was, it was rough at first. I'm used to going to work every day and bringing in steady income and then having to, you know, be furloughed without pay and things like that and then have to rely on government assistance. And I'm not sure if everyone knows, but Maryland unemployment specifically, it was a struggle in the beginning. They had so many claims to go through and it took a few months for me to actually start getting paid from unemployment. So, you know, that was just rough for me. You know, I was fortunate enough to, you know, like I said, have my mom as backup and then I had like a little savings as well. So I wasn't completely struggling, but still just adjusting to that. And then, you know, being worried about everything, like in the beginning, especially because going to the stores, that was a risk. And I'm just like, you know, I don't want to go out and get sick and bring anything home to my kids. And then my mom, she's older. So, you know, it was just a lot to to deal with and take in at the time because it was just so unpredictable. And it still is. Um, it's still a lot that they don't know, you know, and a good thing they have the vaccines now, but not, you know, obviously we all can't get them as of yet. So, um yeah, it just, it was, it took some time to adjust to like the new norm and wearing a mask and, you know, being afraid that, okay, I just went out and I was in the store and it was a bunch of people. So, you know, I remember in the beginning being kind of paranoid at one point because I think it was more so like a panic attack maybe for me, but I kind of woke up one day and I was just so nervous and like I found myself not being able, like I was breathing heavy and things like that. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like what if this is it? You know, what if I have it? You know, they were talking about the symptoms, having trouble breathing and things like that. And I like had to step outside and like get some fresh air for a second and like get myself together because it was just a lot. It was a lot to take in. I understand. I can honestly say, I think we all, went through a period of time where we were just like, I'm scared to go to the store. <laughs> like, I'm scared to, I want to see my friends. I want to see my family, but I, I don't want to go into this area or that area. So I totally understand. So what, can you walk us through some of the things that you did to kind of, you said you were having anxiety attacks, panic attacks. Can you walk us some of the things that helped you cope through the pandemic, to, through the time that you had to stay in? Some of the things I did, I kind of made sure, I think it's important, you know, just as a mom, as a single mom at that, to kind of, I have to take care of me in order to take care of my babies. So, you know, I would just find time during the day to just meditate, really. And um, I like to write. So I take some time, maybe when they're napping, to just write all my feelings and things like that down. And that has helped me a lot. And also, fortunate enough, before the pandemic um, started, I was in therapy. And then, obviously, before we were, like, in person, but then they started doing, like, a Zoom call for um, therapy and things like that. So I was still able to see my therapist on a regular basis. And she helped with a lot (laughs) and just helping me come up with more coping skills and things like that Um, and being able to have that outlet and being able to talk to her about everything that was going on and how I was feeling and, you know, just being able to just let everything out. So that's good. You had that outlet. And it's, I think it's good that you realize that, Hey, this is, I need to talk to somebody because yeah. sometimes we don't realize that. So that, that's awesome. And hats off to you for going and getting help and seeking help because yeah. we don't all do that. Absolutely. So I think basically, so what do you look forward to the most? when the pandemic is over, when it comes to your kids and everything like that? I just kind of look for, and I, and, and I kind of feel like everything may not go back to exactly how they were before the pandemic, because it's not like they are eliminating the virus altogether and it's just going to be completely gone forever. But something that I have to look forward to, I would say, is just being able to, 
I think during this time of being home with my kids, I was able to learn them a little more than I would have, you know, having that eight hour day at work and then coming home and being completely tired. It had its pros and its cons being here with them. So I kind of look forward to just kind of getting back out into the world. There's so many things that I want to do with them now. (laughs) They're getting older. (laughs) I want to take them places. So just really like exploring with them and letting them experience things. And I also want them to get back into social settings, take on clubs or activities and things like that. I want them to be able to have a, a nice social life and things like that. So that's something that I look forward to for them. And then for me, I want to go back to work eventually, you know, because I miss bringing in money that I would, you know, the money <laughs> that I was bringing. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, I look forward to that as well. But yeah, I just think that, you know, I'm trying to be positive about the whole thing. And I know that, you know, hard times don't last forever. So I'm just, you know, I have a positive outlook for our future. So you talked to, you just talked about how um, used to making the money that you used to make and all of that stuff. So can you tell kind of how you figured out your budget and all of that stuff, just living off government assistance and unemployment? Because it's not what you're generally used to making. Well, basically, um, in the beginning of the pandemic, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't exactly what I was making, but it was close to it because, you know, they had the extra, you know, pandemic assistance and things like that. But, you know, once everything pretty much kind of stopped, I had to kind of just cut back on spending. I had to make sure that I put money aside for the, you know, the things that we needed, like diapers, wipes, things like that. And, you know, I just kind of had to know what was worth buying and what wasn't because I feel like um, being home so much in the beginning, I kind of went Amazon crazy. And then I realized. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Yeah. So then I realized like, okay, you know, I need to chill out. Like, you know, I don't know how long this extra money is going to let, you know, it's going to be on government assistance. I don't know when I'm going to be able to go back to work. So, you know, I just need to take a chill pill on the (laughs) spin and and just budget a little better. So, um, you know, I started saving more. I started putting money aside, like kind of knowing what I would spend monthly on the thing, necessary things that we need, like groceries and things like that. So, yeah, I just kind of had to learn how to budget and save and yeah. So you would say, even though it is a pandemic, some positive things came out of it as well. Yeah, some positive things. It's very unfortunate that so many people lost their lives during this time. And I feel for those families and especially not people not being able to be there in person with their families going through that. So, you know, I feel for them wholeheartedly. But, you know, at the same time, I'm extremely blessed for not having to you know, go through a lot of the things that others have. And, you know, I feel in my heart that it's a lot of people that won't be able to see some of their family members again and things like that. So, you know, I don't know. I just had to, I have to really be grateful that I'm able to be here with my babies and my and my family and things like that. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that I wasn't able to see the right, you know, all of my family, like during the holidays, holidays were different. Can you speak on that? Can you speak on how your kids, how you tried to basically what your plan was during the holidays? Because, you know, kids are used to certain things and yeah. how we celebrate. So how did you make the holidays still feel like the holidays with everything going on? Well, a lot of things we had to do. At home, you know, lucky enough, we were, um, you know, they still had drive through things like the little light shows and things like that. So we were able to go see that. And that was good for them. Um, But I mean, for the kids, I mean, they're young, they really, I mean, they know the difference for the most part, but at the same time, they like, oh, gifts. I just want to, <laughs> I just want to <laughs> presents, put presents, presents. And stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. That's their main thing at this age. Um, but for me, you know, it was different. My mom actually contracted COVID and it wasn't as bad. She didn't need to be ho- hospitalized or anything, but, and we live with her. So, you know, it was just difficult. And it was like, maybe I want to say two weeks before Christmas. So, you know, at first I was just thinking like, I don't know how, you know, Christmas is going to be, and you know, you're sick, which we got to stay away from you, things like that. So, you know, th- it was a little different. Um, They weren't able to like, you know, hug her and things like that. By the time Christmas came, 
um, the CDC said that she could come out of quarantine, but she still like, you know, had some symptoms still, you know, like a cough and things like that. So she would wear her mask um, when she was around us. And yeah, I mean, we just had to make do with what we had really. We weren't, normally we go to like my grandma's house and we see all of our family, but we couldn't do that this year. So yeah, it was just different. The holidays were definitely different this year. Absolutely different. Thanksgiving, that was different. We weren't around a lot of family. It was kind of just small and intimate. But I feel like we made the best of, out of the situation at the same time. I think that's what all moms know how to do, make the best out of the situation. Yeah. And it's just like we have to do that. Um, we have to do what's best for us and our children. And during this time, it's best for us to just be here with us and not be around a whole bunch of people. So we just had to take what we had and use that. So I understand. I completely understand. So if you had to give moms everywhere three tips to survive this pandemic, what would they be? Um, well, the first one would be to just take care of yourself. Even if you have to take five minutes out of the day to just breathe and meditate or do whatever it is that you do to find like a middle ground, then do that. It's very important that you take care of yourself and protect your mental health during this time as well, because you want to be able to be strong for your kids and, you know, explain to them the best way that you can, what's going on and things like that. Um, but it's very important that we take care of ourselves. And I was learning, I had to find little ways because, you know, I didn't get as much free time as to myself as I would normally. And, um, you know, I just had to find ways to get a little bit of time to myself to just regroup. And I think that's um, important. Um, another thing is, like I said, explain to your kids the best way that you can. What works for you may not work for everyone else. So it's all about just doing what you feel is best for you. Don't worry about pe how people judge or anything like that. Just do what's best for you and your children. This is a very tough time. We weren't prepared for this. It was nothing that anyone could have done to prepare us for this. I've never thought that we would experience anything like this out of all the little like pandemic movies and things like that that I've seen. I never thought that it would actually hit, like I would be living through it. So you just have to do what's best for you and yours and protect your kids and how you do that is your business. And another thing I would say is another thing that I tried to do to continue to engage, you know, my children and make sure they're learning something. I just took um, a little bit of time out of the day to teach them something. I wanted them to learn something kind of every day. Now, it didn't happen every day. And if you can't do that every day, if they have too much screen time one day or something like that, I would say don't beat yourself up about that. Like, this is a slow process. We are all learning how to live through it and, go, and get through it. And you just have to you just can't beat yourself up about the small things because at the end of the day, like I'm sure your kids are happy and they're healthy. Like, you know, and that's how, what I kind of had to tell myself as well, because it was, especially in the beginning, you know, I really didn't know what to do. I'm just like, okay, yeah. you know, they would be in daycare. They would probably be learning letters and numbers and colors and things like that. And I'm just trying to get my mind together at this point. Like I'm trying to figure out what's next for us. And, you know, I didn't, I had no clue how long it would last. I didn't think it would take the whole, you know, basically yeah. the a whole year. <laughs> so at first it was just like, okay, you know, maybe it's just going to be like a few weeks, you know, maybe they're going to get it under control and then we'll be back like we never left, you know, and then that didn't happen. No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. I don't think any of us expected to be in this long but you mentioned that you make sure self-care is very important. You stress that. Yeah. And I know with two little ones, two toddlers, yeah. how do you find, how do you maneuver your time to find that time to, to self-care and to self-love? Well, basically, I just had to make a schedule. Nap times are mandatory. <laughs> 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 Nap times are mandatory and they come at the same time mostly every day. And so put those kids to bed, girl. <laughs> Make them take a nap. And my kids, exactly. they take a nap for, they probably will stay sleeping during nap time for at least an hour at the, at the like shortest, but maybe like two hours. So I use that time to do whatever I need to do to just get my mind right. And most times I will sleep too. 
And that's helpful for me too, just to catch up on some sleep or I'll write. Like I said, I write or I just meditate really. And, you know, it's been rough and it's days that I literally want to pull my hair out. (laughs) (laughs) They're just all over the place. And, you know, it's overwhelming. I get overwhelmed too. So nobody is perfect. There's no handbook on this. And you just kind of have to take a little, even if it's the slightest bit of time, even if your kids aren't the kids that who take naps during the day, put them in a room, turn that TV on, girl, give them a snack, and go in another room and yeah. just <laughs> it's time to regroup <laughs> and get together and just breathe for a second. That's just kind of what I had to do. I just had to find little ways because, like I said, nap times are mandatory for my kids, but. I can't say that every day they take a nap time. They take a nap at the, the time that I want them to. And if it's too late, I definitely don't want them to take a nap because then they'll be up all night. Yeah. So, you know, on those days, those are the, the harder days. But, you know, it's okay. Like I said, I turn that TV on. I give them a snack and they'll sit in front of the TV for a little bit. And I'll just take a few minutes um, and just kind of get myself together. And that's all I can do. It sounds like you have a plan. It's that, I mean, you sound like you're doing everything, like you said, everything you can do. Yeah, so, yes, I can. <laughs> yeah. And you're doing a great job. No, so, yeah. So, um, is there any words of encouragement, anything you would like to say just to everybody that's listening? Yeah, I just want to say that your kids love you at the end of the day. They, you do no wrong in their eyes. So like I said before, don't beat yourself up about the little things. Stress is really inevitable right now, but try not to stress too much. Um, Like I said, it's important to take some time out for yourself so that you have time to regroup. Make sure you do that, even if it's five minutes. Just take some time to yourself. And my my therapist kind of stressed that to me as well, because at first I had a hard time doing that and like taking time out to myself. So, you know, I really just had to find the smallest of ways to take time out to myself. And then, like I said, get on a schedule if you, you know, if you can. Get your kids on a schedule. Make that nap time mandatory on a daily basis, you know, and just take that time to to yourself, to get yourself together. But at the end of the day, those babies love you. They look up to you. Um, and those little hugs and mommy, I love you at the end of the day is what makes everything just so worth it. And if no one ever tell you, I'm telling you right now, and to all mothers, thank you. Because I am, I'm not going to tell my age, but I, <laughs> I am old, older, and I still call my mama um, when things become overwhelming, become too much. And I promise you, a lot of the times, I wouldn't be able to make it through the day if I just didn't have my mama to give me words of encouragement. So I think mothers play a vital role and just a key role in just society, period. So thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much. Um, And then is there anything, can you, I know you're a social media influencer, you're a YouTuber. Can you tell us how to reach you on YouTube and how, what's your social media plugs? Yes, absolutely. Um, My Instagram is at Sincerely Shay, two E's underscore. And um, my YouTube is Beauty with Shay, that's S-H-A-Y. So that's how you can reach me. <laughs> and thank you, Shayla. Thank you for taking time to speak with us. Thank you for taking time to talk to us. And this has been a joy. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a joy as well.